Alrighty, after a month, two months hiatus, we're back in the game with some VOD reviews. So this is, uh, I'm playing Mogwai's uh, I Cry Every Time, uh, John Kelvey Nilf Guard deck. It's pretty good, it's a typical, fairly typical Spine deck with a pretty big win condition and rain, uh, rain farm into uh, Joachim, into uh, brig the Brigade guy, the guy who hits the Spies. But anyway, so that's not the point of this. So the point of this is I, w I just want to... Uh, <clears throat> call out some particularly big mistakes that both I made and my opponent made. So going to this, this is a fairly unusual, I think, monster consume deck. I don't usually see a lot of monster consume decks using Triss Butterfly, but it's a neat little kind of variation. And I imagine they also have like a gravy hag or something like that to kind of seal the deal as a second, it's a, another win condition in addition to everything they already have. Uh, there's a lot of synergy, you know, with the eggs and, uh, the whatchamacallit, the Arachni. So I guess it's kind of powerful. It's not going to be as powerful as Dagon, of course, but it's pretty good. Okay, so this is the point I want to... The, like, the probably the, the point that made me want to uh, record this game. So you can see here, this guy made a huge mistake, right? So he went first, right? And I got my trusty little pen here. Hopefully it's working this time around. I should be recording desktop. But anyway, so this guy went first, right? I went second. I won the coin flip, basically. So... Uh, basically just kind of break this down a little bit in case you're not really aware of what that means. Basically, he's going to be playing from behind the entire game. He has to catch up to me every single time or else he's going to go down. See, so I'm two points up on him after he went, right? Because he played a super low tempo play in this six strength that Ragnar. He expected me to want to play into this round because I had uh, the brigades. But seeing how he has Trish Butt here, I don't, or that's not Trish Butt, is it? Yeah, okay, yeah, that's Trish Butt. Uh, I don't want to play into this round, so he made a huge mistake of not passing me on this, this strength right here, right? Maybe this pink is a little bit gaudy, but whatever. <laughs> so I'm just trying to explain. He didn't pass me, that means I can safely pass on him, and because it's eight cards, seven, and he wants to win this round because he's only two off, he's going to go down to six cards, and I will still have eight, and we'll go into the next round. Also, I won't have to deal with Trish Butt anymore. And he's going to get a less effective uh, Arachnid because he's all he's going to do is be able to pull out one. Also, his carryover isn't too difficult to deal with. Also, this eliminates the possibility of getting like seriously messed over with an Igni, right? Because if I play a whole bunch of uh, spies, I'm going to have these uh, these guys all lined up, which is not fun. Um, <clears throat> and of course, it's like, well, why didn't you play the spy, right? If you're going to plan on losing this round anyway, if I play the spy, then he just gets a free pass, probably. So let's, let's let's think about that. I kind of just disregarded that, but let's think about that for a second. Number one, is it worth playing into this round? No, because of all this synergy he's got here, here, and he still has consumed on the way. And then as I'll see in the next round, he still had a bunch of these uh, these harpies in his hand. Also, I line myself for a pretty big Igni. I don't actually have... I do kind of miss out on some synergy with these uh, emissaries, but that's not that big of a deal. Also, these uh, the big thing is that the emissaries are going to help me bring out. Um, huh. Actually, I was just about to say they're going to help me bring out rot tossers, but rot tossers doesn't really matter if he doesn't have Trish Button anymore. He could have a renew. So anyway, we'll just kind of we'll well fair enough. We'll fair enough that one and just call it a an even game there. But anyway, uh, just generally speaking, I got kind of went off to a little bit too much of a tangent there. Basically, the whole point of this is to say going up two cards is usually worth it. And I just sweetened the deal by not having that strong of a board and by his board being a little bit too strong. So I definitely, uh, he should have played a high tempo play to try and keep up with me and not just get passed on two cards. That's that's what I was trying to say. Okay, I'll just continue this. It's going to take a little few in to get this, this working all right. Okay, you, this is actually really good for him though because he gets the carryover. But I'm not too worried about it. He overkilled a ton with all these Arachni here. Although he does, he does get to pull him out of his deck, but I'll take what I can get. So this is why I didn't want to play into this round, because he can do stuff like that. He he did 25 points in that single move with the low tempo Ekimara. That's how powerful, like, this, when this combo gets going goes. And it would have taken me too much to catch up. Granted, I could have probably Igneed, but who knows? Who knows for sure? Rid of the Roach, of course. Uh, you could also possibly get rid of this spy, but... Sometimes the spy is really good in round two because it allows you to because sometimes like you have too much tempo going into round two and they pull out too much from you. And if you play a spy, you can kind of keep it, keep the round going. 
they want to keep the round going, so you keep the round going, but you don't go too far ahead in tempo. You still get a little bit of card advantage, uh, retain a little card advantage. Okay, so uh, it might have been a bad idea for me to swipe this uh, this previous Harpies, but I really don't like dealing with carryover, especially in Consume Monsters where they get so much value off of it. So maybe I wasted the uh, wasted the swipe there. I'm not really sure. The Lacerate, whatever. Okay, uh, I made a mistake right here. I should have placed this right. Okay, so I should have placed my Raw Tosser way over here because then he would have had to place his Brand Warrior right here. And when it starts to eat this way, he's not actually going to hit anything. So I just kind of, that was a bit of a mistake on my part. Granted, he still has his Consume Guy, but if I can make things a little bit more difficult, then that's always a positive. So in general, we'll probably try and put the Raw Tossers on the right, on the, the far end of the right side. So they do try to Brand Warrior, they're going to get significantly less value over the long run. Of course, the worst possible solution would be to put it right here, because then he gets an easy path all the way to the right. Okay. I'll clear that. Also, I made a mistake right here. Kind of a minor one, but if, uh, I shouldn't have placed this guy right here. I should have placed him on this row up here. Because now if I want to do uh, later raw tossers, I'm not going to be able to hit these three threes here. I'm only going to be able to two. I should always try and load all of my emissaries into the same row. As you can see, if I had placed this here, if I placed my emissary here, I would have had a much, much better three three right here. Okay, he's just going to eat his eggs and then eat the Rot Tosser. It ended up not really mattering where I put that Rot Tosser, that, that cow carcass, but again, if I can just, if I can, oh, like, the high EV play is to always put the Rot Tosser on the far right of the row every time. And the high EV, if you don't know what that means, it's high expected value. At least that's what I take it to mean. It could mean so, completely different, but that's how I take it. And the high EV, it's not necessarily... It may not have necessarily... High EV doesn't mean necessarily right or wrong in that situation. It just means what is usually best. Okay. And that's a high EV play. And if you are always, if you are always doing high EV plays, you will get better. And as they kind of point out a mistake with my emissary right here, it's completely blocked my path to get three three threes. Or three threes. I've been playing too much Hearthstone lately. I watched the, the latest, the, the whole big reason I take a hiatus was for that expansion, which is really fun. Okay, so this is looking pretty, pretty bleak, right? And this is where, like, kind of my mistakes kind of, like, start, my mistakes, my mistakes start to ramp up, right? So I made a really big, good play of going two cards up in round one and denying his arachne value and denying uh, some egg value and denying Trispa value. Um, and I kind of, you know, Messed up my own value with Imperial Grade. That's not the big deal. I have three of them anyway. Um, so I messed up first by not placing the right all the way to the right, which kind of could have been bad. Uh, second mistake, I could have put the Emissary on this row. Now I'm only going to get two instead of nine. And I'm pretty sure I make a couple more mistakes here coming up here pretty, pretty soon. So I wanted to get the emissary out because I wanted to hit on the Nazica Brigade and hit that uh, two strength spy. I don't hit it though. I only hit the standard bear and the ambassador. I go ahead and go with the ambassador because at least I can get two more value. And since I don't want to worry about Igni, I don't really care about putting it uh, anywhere specifically. Although generally speaking, the high EV play is never placed on this uh, this one strength uh, novice or whatever he is medic. Uh, one, because if your opponent is running uh, Packer Twist Mirror, you have uh, an in on that. You have a, a, a chance to get it. And two, uh, if you're playing Vilgaforts, you always want to uh, have like a very low strength unit like this one, this one uh, strength unit to hit with Vilgaforts instead of a four strength Roach. Okay. 
Okay, so I rained fire. I was uh, for some reason I was hoping I was going to hit on uh, on Nausicaa Brigade, but that's obviously not going to happen because standard bearers on the top of our deck, as shown by emissary. At least I think that's how it works. Still though, uh, rain farm into Yakim is a huge tempo play. And again, generally speaking, the high UV play is not to buff this me medic, but I don't have it before it's in my hand. So, but it's generally speaking a good habit to get into anyway. Okay, uh, generally speaking, you'd probably want to save Peter here, but I'm kind of running out of time and I need to hurry up and get ahead of him. Because uh, my only other play was to play... He lost 9 for 13. Thirteen. Yeah, okay, I could have played uh, S here, but... Whoops. Ah, Double-clicking on this brings down full screen. Uh, I don't know if I finished that thought, but I wanted to save us here for bringing Roach back out. Okay, I uh, uh, pushed the spy back in. And this is actually an incredibly nice hand uh, for this point of the game. But this is where the mistakes happen. So mistake number one, and we're going we're gonna to get the pen out here. Mistake number one. All right. So I want to try and put a, a card on the top of my deck. That's generally pretty strong, right? I want to put some on the top of my deck. Uh, but the thing is, I have Asir, which means I can put any card I want back in my deck and then put it back. So it's step one and then step two. But instead, I got it backwards. I kind of got caught up in this like, oh, it's a 10 strength gold. It's so strong. And I just put whatever card I want on my deck for Vilgoforts. Actually, it should be one, two, and then three. But instead, I went <laughs> instead I went two, three, and then one. Or I went two, one, three, and three. But anyway, that's getting, that's getting messy. Okay, and if I was going to put something on the top of my deck, what would I put up there? Uh, I think I actually see it later. I forget what it is off the top of my head. So I'm looking to put Brigade on top because I'm not going to get much value out of the other two. He plays Crones, a little bit surprising that he runs Crones in the Consume Monster deck, I think. And also that he got it this far without uh, double drawing it or whatever. So I go and get S here. Uh, what I could have done is put Yakim in the deck, uh, or back in the deck. Okay, that's what it was. It was supposed to be Yakim. I wanted to put Yakim back in. And now I'm trying to fruitlessly put it back in, but I'm not going to be able to draw into it. Although I'm not really sure how that mechanic works. If Asir puts cards back in your deck, does it put it in randomly, as in it could go back on top of your deck? Or is it completely, uh, or does it go like just in the middle or at the bottom? That's interesting. I need to look that up later. But generally speaking, I'm pretty sure the Imperial Brigade's on top. Okay, so I'm looking at this opportunity here, right? And I want to... Uh, I have a pretty big Igni here. Now, there's two options. I can... Let's get that pen out. Now, option one is to Igni this and get 12 value, right? Now, I'm looking at the big picture, right? I see these three sixes all lined up, right? Which is 18. So I'm thinking I Vilgefortz. Like, how much is, like, a Vilgefortz? Well, we're not counting Roach because that's standard both, across both. So the Igni play gets me 12, and then this I'd have to hit my own unit, which is not good. So that's minus 10 to draw a card, which is, like, what? It'd actually probably even be a spy, so that'd be even bigger. That's it kind of, that's getting, I don't know, too much into theory. But anyway, so uh, I'm looking at this, I'm seeing 12... Or 18. 12. 12 on Igni. Or 18 plus 8, which is, what, math? 26? So if I just go for the Igni play, it's 12. If I go for Vilgoforts... Wait, no. It's Vilgoforts... To get eight, that's 16. That's 16 at a base value, right? But he draws a card, which is minus five. So it's 11. So it's a little bit less. But then I go and I do Igni. Oh, wait. Yeah, and then I do Igni, which is 18 plus 12, which is 30. So as, as a whole, I have 41 value, right? So 41 for uh, risky play. Now I do a standard play, which is to Igni... 
plus four, plus 12. And then Vugelfort's the six. Is that the safe play? Vugelfort's plus six. Minus five. Plus nine. Is that right? That will be 21. How is it 20 less? Bigger force. Plus six. Mm. Is it really that drastically different? Anyway, it's just a little rambling theory talk. What he ends up doing is, so I think he catches on to what I'm trying to do. So I actually, Vogelfort's the eight. I don't have any of my own targets of Vogelfort, which is a little, oh, I, I could have Vogelfort's the roach. Is hitting the roach worth it? I know I have Impera Brigade on top. It's just some math. <laughs> so I have eight. Plus the Imperial Brigade, which is six, which is 14. And then I Igni, eight plus four, 12. That's 26. Let's do the other math once more time, one more time. So Vilgerfort plus eight, 16 minus five, which is 11. And then I Igni, 18, which is 22. Wait, did I do the math wrong before? What? Am I just dumb? 33, okay. So the low EV play is 33. The high EV play is 26. Interesting. It's a difference of seven, which in this round is pretty big. And this is actually, this, this can only happen because I had uh, I saved us here, but this happens without. But really, this all could have been like made so much better if I just uh, if I had one started with S here, put Roach plus Yakim. So I do ask here. I put uh, I don't know what the sensory guy is called, so I'm just gonna call him uh, call him FP, and then I put what do I put on the top of the deck? I would have to see it. I think if Yakim, no, but see the thing is right. Wait, can Yakim pull disloyal units? Can it pull a spy? Otherwise, what was on the top of my deck? It was a Nazica Brigade. Oh, oh my gosh. So I put I put Yakim at the top and then it follows into Nazica Brigade. I'm just gonna scribble this. Okay. So I put Asir, Roach, and Yakim. But what if Roach disrupts that draw? We'll, we'll just assume for a second that it doesn't. Then I go into Fidget Spinner Guy. <laughs> That's what someone called on the subreddit. It's not so I call him. And then I put Yakim on the top and Nazica Brigade, as I saw already before, was on the top of my deck as it is. And then I do three, which is two Vilgerforts. Whatever it's called, my FF. And then I hit Roach. Because it pulls Roach out of the deck. Okay, so it doesn't even matter if Roach was somewhere on the top. Because I'm going to Vilgerforts the Roach anyway and pull it out. And then it goes into Akeem, into Nausicaa, which is like 20 value or something like that. And then I finish with Igni. Yeah, so it's Asir, Roach, Yakim, Fidget Spinner, Yakim on the top. Vilgerforts to hit Roach, which brings out Yakim plus Nausicaa Brigade. Let's see if we can do the math on this. So it's 10... So it's us here, which is 10. Uh, Fidget Spinner Dude, which is another 10. Uh, Vilgerfort, which is 8. And Yakim, which is minus 5, but it gets canceled out by Nazica Brigade, which I think goes up to 19. 
And then I hit Igni plus 4 plus 8. Uh, so it's 20, 28. This is 12. This is 40. Wait, is that 40? Yeah, it's 40. And then this goes up to 59. So I would have had 59 in points. Or I would have had a fifteen I would have had a fifty nine strength uh advantage gained. How much of that was killing his units? Minus eight, right? So I would have been at fifty one strength here. I would have been at fifty one instead of thirty six. <sighs> anyway, so yeah, that was my huge ginormous mistake. So it basically this whole game was this game was like completely and utterly totally winnable. Oh, shift. Yeah. Because I started off by going up and by two card advantage. It should have won me the game right there. Just going up two card advantage against uh, Consume Monster, right? Because they lose their. They, they, have, they take a long time to get their tempo going. And if I can just like two, uh, get that two card advantage, he's not going to be able to prolong the, the, the rounds very long. And also, he doesn't want to fight round two, so I can qu quickly go into round three. Really. He should have given up round two immediately because he had 11 strength Ekimar. I think, was he trying to two round me? How Can you two round someone on uh, minus two card advantage against like the likes of Nilf card? Who could you even two round in his position? I think if he had his full engine going, he might have been able to. Maybe, maybe he had the, he was trying to bleed me out, but he had a, an extra crone in his hand and he had to put it back. He should have just, but then, because generally speaking, you don't want to try, like saving crowns for round three is a really risky preposition. He had to have it in his hand, or else he would have just played him, right? Because that just would have improved his draws later. But generally speaking, consumed monster wants to make the rounds long so they can get the engine going and start getting arachni, and he has an arachni here. He already had it in his hand, I think. And then he could have bled me out, bled me out, and then played Crones round three. But he didn't. He wanted to try to even up the card advantage. Why? He should have played this Crones round two. No, but he couldn't play round two. That's right. He could not play round, Crones round two. He would have, but he had two of them in his hand, so he had to give up the round early. But he kept so many cards. He sh shouldn't he have gone down to... He should have gone down to two cards, which is the crone, and then the crone, and then he places one back. And then going into there, he has a crone, and he has X card, which is hopefully not crone. <laughs> and then he would have he would have been off he would have been way better off, right? I think he should have just, um, he really should have just, uh, let his, his 11 strength Ekamara, uh, force me to go two cards down to try and face it. Cause gunning 11 strength, uh, with no guard is pretty difficult unless you're playing like reveal or something, which I'm very obviously not. But you can see a lot of no cards guards are 10 strength. And like, uh, also a lot of the plays are relatively low tempo. Like Nautica Brigade is a six. Let's say you play Emissary, Emissary minus two, Brigade plus six. Plus two, that's only eight. Yeah, and if I had some like medic, medic is only like plus seven. Uh, Nazca, hmm. what if you went minus two plus what is it like seven plus two plus two seven? No, that's only plus nine, it's only plus nine for Nazca Brigade. Yeah, he. Should, I think if he had better knowledge of this, uh, of the deck I was playing, he would have passed, and then he would have gone to. Uh, he would have evened out the card advantage with Sekimara, because uh, eleven strength is really difficult to hit. But then I, well, I guess I could have played like something that's a little bit, a little off coat there, like a, a Triss Marigold or something. A Triss Marigold gets me a plus twelve. But uh, one, not many people run Triss Marigold, and two. Hitting 12 is pretty difficult in a lot of cases. 
even still, even if I was able to pass it, it would have to be with something like a Geralt, right? Because Geralt's plus, plus 13. But again, that's also unusual. Yeah, so I went two cards up because I, I capitalized on him, his mistake. But he should have capitalized on his advantage by forcing me two cards down to deal with that Ekamara in most cases. Because that's the high EV play, I think. And then going into round three... Because he can't play round two. We already discussed that. So he has to get the Chrome back into his uh, his deck. And also it reduces the chance of him drawing into it again, right? How much deck then does he have? No, I don't think it actually matters that much. And then he goes into round three. And he gets all the way... He has, you know... Let's say... Uh, how many cards do you have at the start here? Uh, at the start of round two? I don't know. Let's say eight cards or something like that. And then he has eight cards to get, because uh, I know he has a Rand Warrior in his hand now, right? He has a lot more room to get these consumes off. He wastes a lot of his consumes. Unless he was trying to really push for another Ekmar consume into round two, but he didn't. So yeah, he made some mistakes. I made even bigger mistakes. I'm surprised even, like, I'm not trying to bash on this guy or anything, but even, even despite all of his mistakes, I still lost, which is weird. I went two cards up. I also think I played round two poorly. I think in round one, I had an option to go for a standard bear or whatever the weather clear guy is instead of an imperial brigade. I think that would have been better. I would have kept another brigade in my deck, which could have gotten some more value off of those emissaries in round two. So getting two plus two card advantage is not always a win, especially when I make this big a mistake. This is just kind of like, this is like mechanics and knowledge that I kind of flubbed on. This isn't even like wisdom or like overall like game sense. This is just me making mechanical and knowledge mistakes. Both of which I should already be pretty proficient at, but it's been a while since I played and played Delph Guard, so that's my excuse. But anyway, this is a really long ramble time, or not a ramble time, VOD review. But hopefully this is how the most of the VOD reviews will go in the future. It'll be very theory crafty and in depth and all that.